Okay, this is Ringwalk Media in association with Well Eyes Therapy. It's match from Fight Week over in Sheffield. Frank Smith, nice to see you as always. Good to be here, mate. Good to see you. Thank you for being here as always. Well, listen, first, before we talk about boxing, the threads are a lot better than the, the staff, aren't they? Come on. Matty yesterday was awful. It, it comes in time. I've been here 15 years. I finally got the wardrobe consultant, and uh, yeah, Matty will be next, mate. I tell you what, he's going to need some work, I tell you. But listen, what a cracking card this week and topped off with a world title fight that's just had a very, very tasty uh, but respectful uh, press conference. Yeah, look, it's a look, tremendous main event. It's, you can talk about it all day, but you've got two fighters that are going to go in there and give it literally everything they've got. Um, and I think it only goes one way. It's going to be an absolute tear-up. We've seen both of them in amazing fights over the last couple of years but these two coming together it's going to be something very special and a stacked card from top to bottom as well you know you've got uh, Kieran Conway against Linus Yudofi is a terrific fight that we've been waiting for for a long time to see um, you've obviously got Terry Harper defending her titles against Cecilia Breakhouse a fight that should have taken place in May um, but it's here you know Cecilia Breakhouse obviously a, a big star of the sport and a, a, and a you know real experience as well and I think it's going to be a great fight for Terry Harper um, you've got Opie Price as well against Connor Coghills another brilliant fight and then you've got the young stars coming through as well we're so excited by it the likes of Janae Boston who opens up the TV card you've got Cameron Vong as well um, you've got Nico Livias you've got Kobe McNamara as well so stacked card top to bottom got a bit of everything on there but the main event's going to be an absolute tear up and the atmosphere in there is going to be something special Listen, let's talk about a couple of those undercard fighters, especially Cameron Vyong. It's his debut. Uh, he's a Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis uh, uh, protege, I guess. He's from the North East. He's already got a massive following, and he's not short of confidence. No, 100%. Look, he, he looks the part. He talks well. Like you say, he's confident. I think 21 years old. Um, and it, everyone's been saying to us how good this kid is and the future he's got. You know, and how quickly he wants to move as well. So, look, I'm excited. Um, you know, it's going to be very telling on Saturday night. You know, he's got, he's got pressure behind him because everyone's talking about him. But I think we're going to see a tremendous performance and a huge future. And Janae Boston, as always, is progressing, progressing, progressing. Just how long is it going to be before he sort of starts stepping up into those sort of maybe English title fights? Look, I think the plan for Janae Boston is for him to headline a, a, sh a next-gen show towards the end of next year. You know, he's a, he's a real talent and uh, he's very entertaining. Again, he's got, the, he's got the looks, he can talk well, he can get in there and he delivers in the ring. And it's all about entertainment, it's what this sport's about and he delivers it time and time again. The good thing with him is as well, he's very mature around, in and around the media and the press, he holds himself very well. He's probably ahead of his years, I think. Yeah, look, he's got good people around him as well. You know, he's got the likes of Dalton Smith, he's got Sonny Edwards in the gym, you know, um, and they're... They take care of him, and uh, I think they believe in the ability he's got and getting behind him, and I think that you know that helps mature him 100%. And uh, like you sort of talked about uh, Kieran Conway, Linus Adofia fight, we, we, we spoke to Linus, this Mr. Steve Woods giving us grief, as always. We spoke to uh, Linus yesterday. Um, he's very, very confident he's going to take out Kieran. Hey, look, it's a big fight for the two of them, because whoever gets a win here steps onto some major fights in the division. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of pressure on both of them, but it's a great fight. It's a great fight. And Kieran, one thing about Kieran Conway, he's never shied away from taking any challenge. You know, back to back to back, he's always taken fights we've offered him. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for that one. And, of course, you spoke on uh, Terry Harper, Cecilia Brackhouse, a fight that should have happened in Dublin. Very, very disappointing on the day, of course, for everybody, not just for the fighters. Um, but finally, they're going to clash in the ring. Two world titles on the line. I mean, that is, that, that, those styles are going to create a massive fight. Yeah, hundred percent. And like I say, you know, Cecilia's got so much experience. We all know what she's done in the sport over the years. But you know, Terry Harper has been an amazing journey. She's going to have over 800, 900 people in there on Saturday night. She's a she's a true star and built a huge following. Come back, you know, from a from a tough loss, moved up in a few weight divisions, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a telling fight for her. And it's not an easy, you know, it's not walking the park fight. Cecilia Breakhouse, as I say, a veteran of the sport and, and, and huge, huge experience. So looking forward to that one too. Obviously the main event, not much else you can talk about with the main event. The two Warriors, both two-time world champions. Where do you think the loser goes in that fight? Look, I think the one interesting thing about this weight division, there's huge fights to be made, you know, win, lose, draw, whatever. You know, it's all about entertainment. People want entertainment, whether that's with a belt, whether that's without a belt. And we've seen some great fights, you know, that, that sort of round robin between the likes of Maurizio Lara, Michael Conlon as well. They're all tremendous fights and fights people would want to see again. So, look, I think there's opportunity. Neither of these guys are going to want to lose, obviously, but I think there's huge opportunity for them for them both win, lose or draw. 
be interesting to see Mick Conlon face either of those two. Obviously, Lee Wood bid in with him and, you know, maybe wants a bit of revenge and also be nice to see what Josh does against him. Yeah, 100%. Look, they're big, they're huge ticket sellers as well, these guys, with huge followings. And it just adds to the build-up around these events. And it's what's so good for British boxing as well. And it's what we need. Listen, just before we go, because I know you've got lots to do, um, really, really good to see Mr. Connor Ben back in in Florida. A tremendous fight. He really showed his, you know, he come of age and he, not that he needed it, but he really put in a great performance after a certain amount of time out, hard time. It, did, it looked like he was one step above how he was. Yeah, 100%. Look, he's, he's had a long time out of the ring. He's had 17, 18 months out of the ring. He's been training the whole way through. You know, he's a professional. He's, a, he's always been a professional in everything he's done. Um, and the key was to get him back out. And it was the kind of fight he needed as well. He wouldn't have got anything out of going in there in a, you know, a one-round walkover job. He needed someone tough, especially with the fights we're talking about towards the end of this year. You know, if those fights happen, he can't go in there after 18, 19 months out of the ring with just a round of you know, warm-up fight. It's not what he needed. Uh, and I think he was a perfect opponent and he looked, he looked good, he looked much improved. He did and it was nice to see him with a smile on his face a few days afterwards. We know what a tough time he's had, you know, but he's coming through the other side. You know, he's always been that kind of positive man that you, know, you and I both know. And going forward, I'd just like to see him boxing now. You know, I don't want to see him involved in any of all this old cobblers that goes on. It's just so nice to see him back as himself a little bit. Yeah, look, he's, he's been through a time that none of us could ever imagine at that age as well um, you know he's 25 years old and to have been through what he's been through none of us can ever say what that's like um, and look the key is keep him active keep him busy you know he's a, but he's a, he's a huge name for the sport he's a huge name for uh, for British boxing and he's going to have a huge future so you know that, that's the key now keeping him active and, and like I say the, the big fight next talking of the big fight next are we going to see the Eubank fight I hope so look it's the, it's the fight both guys want you know it's the biggest fight out there there's no hiding from it. Uh, there's nothing that comes close for either of these guys, and it's the fight they both want. So I'm confident we can get it over the line. Well, listen, it's always great to catch up with you, mate. We really appreciate your time. I know you're very busy. Um, we're looking forward to Saturday night. It's going to be a cracking atmosphere, and uh, what a great card this week. Yeah, great night, all live on the zone. Excited for it, and uh, thank you for coming as always, and we'll catch up at the Wayne. Thanks, Frank. Cheers.